PK and Zern. Basically, what we want to do is to generate an RSA encryption with OpenSSL, and then we will do it with a nuclear WB55. Okay, that means I will create a project from scratch on this platform, and we'll try to reproduce an encryption that have been done thanks OpenSSL. So for this hands-on, we will use the STM32WB55 Nucleo, and I propose to start a new project with STM32 Qubitl. So new project. I will be or oh, I will select the MCU selector. And the one that we expected is the one from the nucleo. So this one. Okay. Let's test the PK default location. That's it. So the only thing we have to activate will be here. I want to activate the PKE. As you can see, we can configure it inside STM32 QBDO at the moment. So we will do it this manually, thanks uh, Hashel. Let's generate the code. Okay, if we check what we've got in the main, it's quite simple. I will say we've got the pointers on the structure needed by the HL. We've got a PK in it, but in this PK here, you see no parameters. So we will need to do a new initialization on a proper one. So for the moment, I will stay we'll say that we've got the infrastructures to put our code. Let's switch to OpenSSL to generate our test vector we will use now. So now I launch OpenSSL on my Windows and we will generate together the vector test or what we want to reproduce with our PKA on the STM32WB. So first thing, let me show you the version that I'm using just for your information. And now let's generate the RSA key. So my private key.pem and we could select a size of 1,024. Okay, we could check the value generated my pref key okay and we would like to see it in text form so here i think now we are familiar with the structures we've got the modulus the public exponent the private exponent the two prime number the exponent one exponent two and coefficient that could be used to do the crt modulus exp exponential here we've got all the field needed and we will just have to convert this to put them in the C structures for our test. Let's continue to, uh, I will say, encrypt a file. So now I will extract the public key from this the private, key, private key structure, I will say. So from my private key, I want to have the public key and it would be put in my pub key.pem. Okay, so now we only have the public key in the my pub key.pem. And I prepare for you a file that we will use as input. So I propose something quite simple, as you can see, on a line on the 1024 bits for simplify the example. Okay, so this is our plain text and I want to encrypt this with the public key that we will have here. Okay, so the command is open SSL 
Eresa, HL. Okay, and we will do a row conversion. We will use a public key as input. The in key was my public key dot pen. We will do some encryption and we want to encrypt plain text dot bin and the output will be in plain text dot underscore encrypted dot bin. Okay. If I just check the content of plain text encrypted dot bin here we are. So now we've got our vector test. We've got the input or what we want to encrypt. We've got the output, the encrypted messages. And here we've got all the value, public and private, to do the encryption. In fact, we will only use the public key here. Okay, so what I propose is we will copy all this stuff in our C file and then and then we will put it in a comment at the beginning. So for example in this part. Okay, so I would say what are we interested in? Here we've got the value for the key, for sure we want to keep them. This format is not interesting for us. We don't need the command, the plain text is here, and the encrypt text value is here. Okay, so let's save this first. I would say this is our vector test now we will use. Let's declare the C structures with uh, our key value. So we'll take the Mobius, public and private exponent. Let's declare a private variable with those values. It will be another refresher. Then I will properly convert those values. Okay. For the public exponent, we can do it directly. same way. Okay, to convert this, I will just use um, text edit, for example, to just copy past this. Um, I will search and replace. So let's replace each point by this and then we've got to replace such uh, replace okay with this one it should be okay So this is for the modulus. Okay, uh, just one remark. It started by zero. And with OpenSSL, there is a coding in ASN1. When you've got zero, zero to start, that's uh, just some things to indicate the sign of the value. So it's a positive one. And you have to remove it if you want to have 128 bits. So please, if you've got zero, just remove them. Okay, just. Okay. 
It's a boring task. I do it with you. That way you can see how I do it. Manualish, not very interesting, but it has to be done. So I do the same for the private. And a replace point. Here is not started with zero zero, so no modification to be done. Okay. Let's align the structure. It's not too sure if it is zero. It would be better. Okay, we are aligned on the size. Good, so key value are now defined. Let's define our plain text. Oops, not location. So the test vector we've chosen was well, this one. Okay, quite simple. So let's initialize it by ourselves. Oops. Okay, so now we are, I will say, ready for the structures. Let's define also the output structures. So we will get the result, which will be encrypted data. And eventually decrypted data, if we want to Double check this. Okay, I will just try to compile just to check if I haven't made any syntax error. Good, so now we can have the happy high. So let's move to the main. Okay, we've got the PK and it's just done here. If we check in the code what we've got here, the PK in it is done for the hash hair, good. So let's come back to our main. And let's see what I want to do. To be hash hair PKA. And it will be a modulus exponent action. So modulus exponent, okay. The structures, we've got an input structure that we will see together. And here, let's put some time out value. For example, so let's check what is this input structure we have to use. So number of side of the exponent array operation operand one number of element and modulus. Or uh, okay, so I won't say it's trivial, but it seems quite obvious regarding what we've got as input. So let's declare this variable here. So our input parameters. Okay. Then so exponent size equal size of our public exponent completion to the job first, sorry. 
then in that hop size is the size of the modulus. Next one, our exponent. So it, here it's our public exponent. The modulus. And the last parameters, oops, sorry. Our operand, which will be our plain text. Okay, that's think it's okay. Here yeah, it's a pointer on the structure. So here we'll do the exponentiation. So the operation will be done here. Let's check maybe the result. Or first if the status is okay or not. If it's different from a shell. Okay. Let's add a hero handle here. And if it's working fine, we will need to get the results. So here we've got another happy eye for that. A mode x get result. Okay. So here the PK. And we will put this in the encrypted uh, encrypted data. Okay, let's compile this. Mm, I think it's okay, so now we need to debug. So I will launch the debug. Mm, ah, sorry, I have plugged my board on. A USB hub, not bad idea. I will unplug it. Mm, I propose to hand now the decryption. So it's exactly the same operation, but we won't use the same parameter. Here we will use the private exponent. Okay. Private exponent here, and we will use the encrypted data. Um, we need here to increase because one second will, won't be enough for this decryption. Let's take five, and should be okay. And let's put the result in decrypted data. Okay, I hope I haven't forget anything. TM note and reload. It will build my sources. We still have breakpoint on the Y1. So here it's finished. Let's check the decrypted data now. And we've got what is expected. So we have encrypt and decrypt. Okay, so it was exactly what I want to show you here with the PK. I hope you like this hands-on.